All right, Texas in the truck. So my settings here, you can go any steering ratio that you want. I like 16 to one for me personally. Steering offset, you don't have to change. It's gonna be neutral in the straightaways, which is what I like. Brake bias, not gonna matter for qualifying. Might matter for race uh, and very late runs. So in that case, put it pretty low. 56 is kind of the sweet spot in the trucks that I feel like. But like, always go with your brake bias to as low as you can go without getting rear tire sliding under braking. As long as you're not getting rear tire sliding under braking, you can go lower. Um, okay, so this will be a second lap, hot lap. First lap, we don't get up to speed quite enough. And the turn one and two has a lot less grip on cold tires. And you don't need a save or anything for the second lap. You just kind of just go. So this will actually be a full throttle qualifying lap. One and two does seem a little daunting uh, to full throttle. And so I'll just tell you right now that we're going to do a late apex. So start really wide, cut down really far, trying to make the corner straight as possible. I'll show you how it goes right here, but it's not going to be very fast. And basically, uh, the right rear will want to slide a lot more here, so I'm actually going to have to bail out of it. The When we get to our hot lap, the, it's going to be essentially slide the right rear tire as little as possible. Very easy to do in one and two. Also easy to do on the entry of three and four. Also, you can see here, you don't worry about going very high for this run up. It doesn't matter too much. Okay, so we're going to get all the way up to the wall. We're going to aim low, cut down, get down there pretty late and try to just avoid right rear sliding and slide all the way back up to the wall. Pretty good. Might have gotten a little tiny slide there. Three and four, I'm going to take a little bit wide, but not too wide. And then we're just going to try to hook it on the bottom without sliding our right rear. So we get up to the wall here. If you can keep that pinned on the bottom, do it. But uh, sometimes the car will just want to slide up. And it's uh, best not to fight it because that's when you get the right rear slide. I mean, if there's not too much to it. It's a little bit precise in one and two. Three and four, the lower that you can enter, the better, but also it just makes it, you see how I slid a little bit there and all that time is now going away. That's why I did that little bit of a wider entry because that lower entry has a better potential, but it's more difficult to avoid all of those right rear slides. And you just want to avoid the right rear slide by any means necessary. So let's take a look at the best lap there. So full throttle, so I turn in about at the Texas, but we don't want to get down to the bottom too early. So I start the turn, but then I kind of wait a little bit. So you see it's kind of not pointed at the line yet, but then about halfway down the track, I really pointed at the line. And that, that point where I go from pointed straight to pointed at the white line, this is the part where you're most likely to slide your rear tires. So you want to almost correct before it does that. So I turn and then I kind of correct back to the right just a tiny bit there just to avoid that slide, but I still want to get my lefts on the white line. And then once they get to the left white or once they get to the white line, just let the car come up the track uh, how it wants to. So once I get to that white line, steering wheel is now locked. I cannot go any farther to the left uh, with my steering wheel than this. And now I just hold that steering wheel and just let go of it slightly as I come off the corner and avoid those slides. So that was a pretty good job of avoiding all of the slides. And three and four, I want to make another little line from my left rear to the white line. Enter almost straight and then kind of see how this part here is always going to be a little bit difficult because when the banking transitions, the car gets a little light. So you got to be ready for uh, some sort of reaction from the car. And you just want to make sure that the right rear doesn't kick out. If we look at the right rear suspension, we can see that even though my wheel was doing a lot, this was very smooth. Like it wasn't, it didn't kick out. We it was almost like a proactive correction with my steering wheel. And I think I might have tiny clipped the apron here. No, that's just a bump. So that was why I wasn't able to keep it hooked to the bottom. Uh, if you memorize where that bump is, you can add a little bit more steering wheel right before you get there, and that'll help you stick to the bottom a little longer. Um, I did not have that bump memorized. 
like keep it on the bottom. Yeah, like a bump like two thirds of the way through the corner. And that's what kept me from keeping it stuck to the bottom all the way through. But you notice that even though I hit that bump and started coming off the track, I did not force it back down because that's a recipe for um, kicking out the right rear and losing time. So I would rather take an uglier line and not slide my rear tire than to try to stick to the prettier line and uh, have a right rear maybe slip a little bit. Long run, not too much to talk about, to be quite honest with you. Um, as the tires get older, we're going to have to prioritize that turn one entry. I'll tell you, I'll show you how we do that as we come back around. So you'll start by breathing out of the throttle and then very late run, you might be dragging your brake. Uh, when you breathe your throttle to get into turn one, you wanna make sure that you're doing this before the banking transitions or else you're gonna be behind on rotation and you're gonna to have to slow down extra in order to get the same result. So let's pretend I'm on slightly older tires here. And I need to get down to the bottom, I'll do like a little blip here, and then that'll help me turn down to the bottom. It, you'll, you'll feel, it'll feel so easy to get down to the bottom for like about eight to 10 laps. And then at some point you're just like, wow, this car doesn't turn anymore. And that's because the wear of the tire or the, the weight of the tire shifted to kind of being on the right front more than the right rear in the corners. Seems like the track is sped up a little bit since the last time I was out here. But we would just do a little tiny blip. And you can even do this early run just to help save a little bit. Oh, you see, and that's the other thing I was gonna talk about. Uh, right rear tire sliding like that is going to be the thing that really hurts you in the long run. Just like we were talking about don't do it in qualifying, don't do it in racing either because the heat that you put on your right rear is very hard to dissipate at Texas because it's always uh, being relied upon in the corners. It doesn't hurt you too bad as your tires are coming up to temperature, but like once you get in the thick of a run, you want to maybe take out a bit of throttle in the center just to make sure that you don't uh, slide your right rear tire and compound some heat issues that would give you less grip as the run goes on. The people that are able to manage sliding the right tire throughout the run are going to be the ones that have an easier time going full throttle through three and four and getting the power down in one and two. Huge priority. So don't want to be on the right front too much on entry, but once you make that transition into the corner, you don't want to ask too much out of the right rear. You might want to just hold like 80% throttle for a little while so that you can have a more stable corner exit. If you feel like you're on the edge of loose, it doesn't really help you to be on that edge of loose in the truck compared to like the Arca car, which I love. The truck, you want to drive neutral in these type of setups because being on that edge of rotation isn't going to get you too much, especially in three and four. One and two, it theoretically could help you a little bit, but probably not like the biggest difference. Like I can just kind of let off a little early and still get back on the throttle here and get off the corner. But in three and four, the corner kind of helps you turn by default because of the banking. So if you're sliding your rear on the edge of, of loose on the three and four turn, it's probably unnecessary. And even after these couple laps here, when I come in, you'll see that the right rear has probably worn uh, quite a bit more than the right front. Yeah, 98, 99, so more like double, almost. I mean, it's probably gonna be a little closer than that when all said and done, but that right rear is what you're gonna have to be careful of, especially for the beginning of the run, so that you set yourself up. If you get tight late in the run, that's fine. Just manage it. <clears throat> how you would normal tire saving, like uh, backing up your entries and all that fun stuff. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the track.